Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today and today I want to show you Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This is a game that I've actually been keeping my eye on for quite some time and they finally released the alpha version shall we call it and so I bought myself a copy and I'm trying it out. First thing to keep in mind of course this game is alpha so it's super early on not a lot of things are complete. Right now you've only got the Naval Academy which is 21 missions that you can do in their sort of individual missions. I'm going to choose the last mission, which is the modern battleship. And so basically what you're going to be given is a set amount of money. You're going to be building a battleship and you're going to be given an objective. In this case, fighting an enemy fleet that is two battleships, a bunch of heavy cruisers and destroyers. And you get to choose what your bonuses are going to be. So you can either go with boosting technology, which is giving you a whole bunch of improved technologies, um, even you know more advanced technologies, or you can choose to have more money, another 120 million. There's sort of advantages and disadvantages of both. So with the one that I picked, which was better technologies, I can build one ultimate battleship. So think like super, super, super version of Yamato, which is basically what I'm going to try to build here. And alternatively, what you could also do is you can get more money. And with more money, you can end up building more battleships. So maybe your idea was to build cheaper, smaller guns, but build like a whole you know, armada of them. You can offer something like that as well. Now, start of the game, this is the build interface. Now, during the build interface, there's a whole bunch of things to talk about. So there's a displacement slider that you see me sort of sliding around left to right. So the more displacement I select, the bigger the actual ship is. Now this displacement doesn't mean that like, okay, just because by increasing that, I just keep everything else the same, but I only increase that. No, no, it, it scales upwards. So obviously by increasing the overall displacement, I increase the same amount of, um, you know, so proportion, shall we say, right, for engines and everything else. So, you know, you only have so much displacement to build on. And of course, bigger ship costs more money as well. But like I said, I'm trying to build super freaking Yamato. <laughs> <laughs> so initially I opted to go 30 knots because that is the speed of a fast battleship, but most likely I will have to tone that down a little bit. My guess is I'm going to actually end up very similar to the speed range of a real Yamato, which is about 27 knots, because at a certain point in time there's a sort of a diminishing return to increasing speed. Now I'm not sure if that's modeled in the game per se, but typically speaking for every knot of speed you want to get in you know, on bigger and bigger and bigger ships, it costs a ton of weight and a ton of horsepower to get that one knot. So eventually probably make some sacrifices there. Okay, anyways, then there's range slider and bulkhead slider. Range slider currently, I don't think has much of a use and I think it's because the game doesn't have a campaign mode yet, although it should have that in the future because there is a little menu button that says campaign. Moving on, and you'll notice that um, I'm now picking components, and there's a ton of components, everything from engine to the oil you use to what kind of boilers you're using. Do you have like an auxiliary engine to provide backup power? What kind of armor type you're using? You know, I'm using Krupp 4, the best armor in the game essentially, and that's of course the bonus from the uh, bonus I selected earlier. If I was choosing more funds, I wouldn't get access to that armor. So it's one of those things you have to make let's say compromises and decisions for, right? Anti-torque protection, I can pick that, I can pick, you know, do I want a single hull, double hull, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm gonna be picking through a whole bunch of things here. Um, again, you know, I have destroyers in this battle that I'm gonna be going into, so I do want some anti-torque protection as well. Um, of course, there you go, you can see there is going to be citadel protection. You can choose what kind of citadel protection you want. Depending on the kind of ship you're designing, there's different types. It doesn't mean that Citadel 5 is necessarily the best, but there's sort of a, depends on kind of the situation, right? See, Turtle back is Citadel 4, and Citadel 5 is actually all or nothing. And you'll notice that there's different sort of pros and cons. Now, for this battleship, since like I'm saying, I'm going with Ultimate Yamato, um, I'm gonna go with all or nothing protection because I just really wanna keep the core of the ship protected and everything else, yeah, just whatever, right? <laughs> Okay, choose anti-flood protection as well. And this is like, you know, being able to pump out water because the damage, the way it modeled in the game is that as you take shells, fires can start, flooding can start, and you know, your ship has to deal with those things. Now, you actually don't have to do much in terms of that. A lot of that is uh, sort of more automatically uh, dealt with. Um, but again, it can overcome your ship as well in 
you know, you can still have your ship detonate from explosion things like that and, you know, all sorts of um, design decisions that you have to come up with. So eventually you'll get to the armor section at the bottom and you'll have to decide how much armor you want. Obviously, like I said, super Yamato. <laughs> so I'm going to sort of really go all out and try to build a crazy, crazy kind of ship. Here we have the gunpowder. All different kinds of gunpowder and each of them offer sort of different kinds of things and you know again it's not like the most advanced one is the best there's you know sort of considerations to be made for what you want um, I do think in this particular build I did end up taking the final most advanced version I think <laughs> so you'll see with this one for example there's like a reduction to shell penetration which is like well if I'm going for long range it's kind of like a not so useful thing right uh, this one again not a lot of shell penetration you do get more damage more HE fire chance more HE shell damage but the two big threats are two battleships so hmm yeah maybe not White powder, okay, so that one had a whole bunch of bonuses, sort of small, but not many, you know, sort of negative uh, consequences. This one, hmm, cordite, yeah, seems to be quite a lot of uh, negatives there, though you have to, again, determine for your particular ship, for your particular needs, what do you want out of it, right? I'm just looking through all of them. TNT, of course, you know, is the higher tech stuff, so it is very very good although you'll notice that like the cost of your shells and everything is just sky high look at this one hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> um, but I ended up going with white powder because white powder gave like sort of shell damage shell penetrations um, I think that's what I ended up going with in this particular build because I thought that one had certain advantages for my ship that had to fight a whole bunch of battleships so I decided I think I'm gonna go with this yeah, see, shell muzzle velocity and everything. Yeah, that's what I end up going with. Okay, then there's sort of reload. You do you want to you know sacrifice things for faster reload? So again, there's a decision to be made. I end up I think on this one sticking with standard because the automatic and the enhanced just cost too much weight wise. And again, you do have limits in terms of weight, right? I mean, I have nothing on the ship yet, but you'll see eventually as soon as I start slapping things on that there's a lot of weight oriented things that have to be dealt with again terror traverse again and more technologies to consider what do you want uh, i think i'm going to have a ship that might be maneuvering more so i want my turrets to be able to keep up range finders oh yeah the funniest part of this when i was looking at this you notice all the range finders say rng on them <laughs> oh man um, but there's different kinds of rangefinders, you know, you've got the coincidence rangefinder and then there's the, um, what they call the RNG, uh, the stereoscopic one, the RNG-S rangefinder, and then there's, you know, one, two, uh, sorry, one, one, two, two, three, three, like that, and you can end up picking one that will do you good. So the coincidence one gives you faster gun aiming speed, uh, better, uh, I think, base accuracy, while the other one gives you long range accuracy. What I say I was building? Super Yamato, which means I think long range accuracy is going to be my thing. Okay, radio. <sighs> so far, I haven't really figured out what the radio is really for, to be honest. Um, so I decided not to install it because it actually takes up a whole chunk of weight. Now, that might be a mistake because maybe it has to do with fleets or whatever, but screw it. No radio, but I want radar because radar is awesome. Most things are set up. I think I'm ready to kind of go. Time to build the actual ship. So there's only one hull here. Advanced tower. Okay, so this is the main tower. And like I said, it looks a lot like a Yamato tower. Um, so I'm just going to stick it in place here. There we go. Okay, so I have one main tower. And then there is a secondary tower. Strangely enough, this version of the ship is actually got an Italian flag. So... Yeah, I mean, technically the secondary tower should go somewhere else, but I want more guns and I really don't care so much about having a backup tower because it'll kind of restrict my arcs, I think. So I think I'm going to end up sticking it really, really close. Okay, funnel into the forward tower area. Yeah, very Yamato-like. And obviously I'm sure that as the game progresses, we're going to see more and more different hulls, different like superstructures and all these other things. For now, this is just fine, right? Even though it's an Italian flag, it's, you know, anyways. <laughs> all right, so barbettes, I'm going to put one down in the front and I am going to put one on the back, but you can see that the 
Um, other secondary tower that I put in there is actually blocking it, so I might eventually move that just so I can put on a crap ton of guns. They're all different kinds of guns right here. You can see uh, everything from 229 millimeters up to 457. I'm going with the biggest guns I can humanly put on the ship, and I'm gonna put on as many of them as I can. I am sure there is a way to do a relatively more trollish build on this game as well, which I'm probably gonna give it a try later tonight, where I'm gonna equip a battleship, make it relatively heavily armored so I can tank a bunch of stuff, and then just throw on smaller battleship guns, but just throw on a metric ton of them. I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but it is something that I'm willing to try probably a little bit later and maybe for another day and another video. All right, so come on now. Hey, oh yeah, by the way, you'll notice that the guns, you'll notice that there is the amount of penetration they can do, but you'll also notice that there's like an accuracy thing. So one of the big reasons why I picked the 457s is because if you notice, they have a relatively good amount of accuracy even out to things like 10 kilometers. So why the heck not? You can sometimes, and this part I still haven't figured out exactly what and how this works. Sometimes you can sort of put things in certain places, but sometimes it doesn't really work. So I can put the main gun there, but the barbette doesn't go there at all, no matter how much I want to try it. So, so far I haven't really found a way to make, let's say, like an Issei kind of battleship where you've got like the center turrets that are like super firing over each other in the middle, like there's no way to do that. So I ended up deciding to get rid of that sort of further away back secondary tower and just stick it right up with the main uh, tower area so I can put extra amounts of guns. And of course, put a barbette in there in the back. So here we go, center line guns, 457s, yep, yeah, gonna go with the triples. And I'm gonna stick on, ooh, here we go, one there, one there, wait, there you go, best arcs I think are around here. Yep, one there, and I'm gonna put one at the back of the ship. <laughs> oh, this is uh this is a 15 gunned Yamato basically. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've still got some weight to spare. All right, so of course the next thing after I got all the guns on is figure out how much armor I can stack on. So obviously I wanna make myself as protected as I humanly can. So I'm gonna go shove up like, let's say 470, 480 millimeters of belt armor, somewhere around there. And again, keep in mind that you have weight and cost limitations. So you're not always going to get everything you want, but the final result should still look okay. So I've got 475 millimeter belt so far, which is a ridiculously thick belt. And then I'm going to put on, ooh, wait a minute. That's not good. You'll notice that I've gone over on cost by quite a lot, right? I only had 145 million, now I've gone over that. So, hmm. I gotta start making some sacrifices somewhere. And what's the first thing I can do? I can knock down the speed a little bit. I don't have to be as fast. I was initially planning 30 knots. What about 28? Can I get my armor configuration that I want at you know 28 knots? So, ooh, wait, nope. That's not good. Gotta make some more sacrifices somewhere, crud. All right, so get still you know do the full armor configuration first. I mean, obviously there's some things I definitely am not gonna sacrifice. Turret face armor, my deck armor, I'm not gonna sacrifice that. My conning tower, I'm not gonna sacrifice that. Eventually something's gonna have to give. Um, armor on the turret tops, can't sacrifice that unless you wanna have your guns constantly get knocked out. Yeah, so definitely not things I wanna do. So I'm just gonna get the armor configuration I want and then see what other adjustments I can make. Oof, look at those costs right now. Ooh, yeah, I'm about 100 plus, wait, not 100, 10 mil over right now, not 100 mil. And now I'm overweight, oh dear. Hmm, yeah, what can I do here? Hmm, I guess I could. Let's see here, I can make some adjustments here, I think, let's find out where I can make the adjustments. All right, so I can knock the speed down to about 27 knots. Okay, so that gets me into the tonnage range. I'm still 12 million over. So I gotta make some sacrifices in some other areas. So let's see what I can do. Hmm. Maybe I can change some of the armor schemes, possibly. The turtle back one, it adds armor weight, but the same is true for all or nothing. However, the armor weight increase with the 
Turtleback is to all armor, so everything increases by that percentage, while with the all or nothing, only some things have increased. So that's not a good idea. Hmm. So I can't do the Turtleback, and I can't do all or nothing because it's too much. Could I do Citadel 3, which is still an armored Citadel, but it doesn't have an armor cost, because you'll notice Citadel 3 doesn't increase the armor weight. Okay, so that gets me under weight and cost, so now I'm pretty good, but I've sacrificed some Citadel protection here. But still, I mean, I have a ludicrous amount of deck and belt armor, so that's something. Hmm, let's see here, maybe I can touch up the belt a little bit. Okay, no, can't go up that. What about deck? No, that's too much. All right, so I like my armor configuration so far. I've got a decent amount here, but I want to free up some more weight possibly. Okay, can increase the bulkheads um, because that's, again, a whole ton of weight. Hmm. Maybe what I can do is I can, because uh, as you'll notice, I only have primary guns right now. So I do want to throw on some secondary guns. Now, some of the big ones, like 178 millimeter guns, these are really, really heavy. And so they're probably not going to work. Um, so that's probably a no-go. 203s, they can't be mounted in those little points. They can only be put along the hull. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Maybe I'm just gonna do like a mass collection of tiny pew pew guns, like destroyer guns, but just like a whole ton of them. Maybe that's what I'll do. So let's see what happens here. I'm gonna find, yeah, I think these ones, 127 millimeter guns. And then what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna shove them all like into all these little slots that I can, right? I can do that, I think, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six of them, which means that I have an 18, uh, gun broadside from these 127 millimeter guns or am I gonna be able to fit on some more here hmm I'm getting greedy I might want to fit on some more here six six is not bad I mean 1827 millimeter shells that's a significant amount of uh, broadside firepower but I'm again over cost so hmm sacrifice a little bit of armor not too much but maybe I could sacrifice a bit of armor here and there um, I have a lot of secondary armor. Like you've noticed, I have like 152.5 millimeters of secondary armor. Probably can sacrifice some of that as well. So the really cool thing, and why am I sort of spending so much time in this is because this is really cool. This is actually very much um, an element of historical naval design is you've got X budget, X displacement, you know, make the best ship you possibly can in those circumstances. And you'll soon come up to this problem, which is where do I want to get my sacrifices from or where my compromises are coming from. So eventually you start to give up certain things. So you're like, okay, maybe I can do with a slightly slower ship or a little bit more of that. Yamato, for example, is a very good example of a ship that actually had a lot of compromises. And one of its compromises was actually on speed. 27 knots is actually a compromise speed. And you'll notice that on this particular ship, my version of the Super Yamato, I'm going much the same direction. I've got a speed compromise. I just can't go as fast as I would otherwise want because I'll be over budget. There we go, I sacrificed some acceleration. So why? Because I can drop the weight and I can drop the cost. So I'm going to be able to maybe do some more things here like, oh, I don't know. Can I squeeze in some more secondary guns? Yes, maybe, come on. Yes, I can squeeze another one there. All right, I'm gonna put another one right and there, and I'm gonna stick one right there. There we go, yeah. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of these triple 127 millimeter guns. That's 24 shells coming out of the side all at once. That's a pretty good amount of secondary firepower, at least to keep things at bay, right? My primary mission with this ship, as you can probably figure, is to just utterly destroy everything with overwhelming amounts of primary firepower. My armor protection looks good. Lots of belt armor, pretty thick deck armor. Got good turret armor. Conning tower looks all good. Let's go into battle with my version of the Super Yamato. So here we go, my super battleship versus the British Empire's fleet, two battleships, five heavy cruisers, and five destroyers there. So into the battle interface, and well, the first thing I'll tell you is that if you're playing this on 1x speed, the battle will go on for a very, very long time. Top uh, left corner, if you notice, it's two hours and a half if you play at 1x speed. 
very high chance that what you'll end up doing is playing it at like 2x, 3x, or 5x. Mostly probably 3 to 5x. Um, I prefer playing at 3x because it still gives you some degree of control when it comes to maneuvers. 5x if you just really want to speed things up and there will be sort of times in the battle set of this uh, battle sequence, sorry, um, where I will be switching between those two speeds and maybe on occasion going to 1x speed just to show you sort of in-depth the graphics, um, you know, from the battle area, I guess. Anyways, so um, I have one ship and I think this is where with only one ship things are relatively simple because all you have to do essentially is plot the course for the one ship, target enemy fleets which are currently being picked up by my radar like far 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 away so far that I don't even actually see their icons yet um, if I zoom in over there I uh, should find them although currently they are still unidentified you can actually see um, sort of upper middle area you'll see sort of like question mark question mark question marks so basically yes warships identified we don't know really what they are of course that beginning screen did tell me what I'm facing up against I'm pretty sure later on uh, this will be somewhat critical to the game because it does seem that this system in place has these sort of question marks about what kinds of ships you're running into. So possibly in the future you're going to be in a situation where you misidentify things, you go in expecting certain ships and then you end up finding out that there's something completely different, right? So anyhow, um, I have plenty of ammunition, obviously, for my main guns. My secondary guns have a ton of ammo as well, so I'm totally ready for this fight. The guns are automatic, I guess, and your probability of hitting stuff is also calculated by a whole bunch of things. So if you take a look at the left-hand side, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of sort of like hit chances, what affects it, you know, weather, am I near things, my own speed, etc., etc., etc. And that is... Uh, well, I guess that's just kind of how this is, right? This is more of a um, tactical kind of game rather than a shooter type game. So it's not like World of Warships or War Thunder where you, you know, get the binocular view and you're the one shooting. Here you're really thinking bigger and more complex, I guess, aspects of how do you want to engage this fight? Do you want to close the distance? Do you want to stay further away? Which targets do you want to engage first? Because individually, it's very easy to manage. One ship, not a problem. But if you're managing a fleet, and I think this is going to be the thing later on, is you're going to be managing fleets, there is going to be a lot more stuff you have to think about. So assuming for a second here that if I was in control of, let's say, the enemy fleet here, where they have two normal battleships, a bunch of heavy cruisers, and a bunch of destroyers, how do I fight this one super battleship potentially? So you can sort of see where the deliberation uh, is going to be. Obviously, I have open fire, and I'm mostly just plotting courses, you know. I can even let the AI really take control of it. But you can see my shells are already landing on a battleship really, really far away. And, you know, singular ship, game is really easy. If I had multiple ships, things get a little bit more complicated, right? Like I said, uh, you really have to think a lot more. And there is actually one particular battle I played... A little bit earlier where I actually start to see that in the AI which was actually really cool and I'm not sure if this is a um, especially kind of program thing that they've been doing but the AI was intelligent enough to hold their destroyers back so they fought me primarily with a lot of their cruisers and their battleships and this is of course a different game not this one this one is uh well this game you'll see uh, I've built a good ship let's just put it that way <laughs> but there was one game where I didn't build the world's best kind of ship for the task and uh, you know I was fighting their battleships and ships take a while to sink you don't just I mean unless you get lucky and you really you know hit home and hit that I guess uh, magazine and you blow the ship to pieces I mean in a lot of cases the ships do absorb quite a bit of damage so even take a look at this thing it's you know I'm landing good hits but you know it's not sinking right so anyways in the other battle going back to the other battle I was talking about um, it was really interesting because what was going on was that I was engaging the battleships engaging the battleships the cruisers were just peppering me with shots you know setting fires uh, you know lots of fires hitting things hitting things taking a lot of structural damage doing damage to my engines and things like that and my ships started to slow down and slow down and slow down eventually I was getting only maybe four or five knots worth of speed my ship was really really painfully slow and 
you know, I'd managed to finally get rid of their battleships and I was like moving on to their cruisers and right at the time when I was just in a really bad shape, all the destroyers, like five destroyers, started making torpedo runs on me and that was rough because I couldn't maneuver. Couldn't maneuver means it can't dodge torpedoes. And the torpedoes aren't like super easy to see. They don't have like little markers to tell exactly where they are. You're really looking for the little lines in the water to show you where the torpedo is. And that battle got really dicey because those destroyers closed in and really started laying into me with torpedoes. And it was scary because I think I was very, very close to actually sinking because my um, float percentage, the structural float percentage that you see on the top right of the screen, my float percentage was not that great. But I mean, my pumps were just marginally keeping up there and keeping my ship up. So that is an aspect of the game, right? So if you take too much torpedoes, you will sink in. If you get overwhelmed, your ship sinks really, really quickly. For now, of course, I'm still maintaining a pretty good range, and I am hammering away at these enemy battleships. Of course, I mean, with the kind of guns that I have and the number of shells I am flinging, you can see that I am absolutely doing just bucket loads and bucket loads of damage. I'm also maneuvering, and even though maneuvering does affect me to a small extent in terms of penalties applied to my accuracy, it does seem to have a bigger impact on the opposing AI. They do seem to struggle a little bit more when I'm actively maneuvering constantly. So I'm going to keep doing that. And again, this is why I said, you know, you're most likely going to end up playing at like three times speed. At five times, shells do have a tendency of coming in quite a bit faster, and sometimes you don't really have much time to issue repeated commands over and over again. And remember, so far I'm only managing one ship, so it's relatively easy to be the super battleship and just hammer everything to pieces. It was a lot harder to control two ships. I actually tried that as well. I tried one build where I didn't have the one super battleship. I had two still pretty good but not super battleships. That game was a lot harder because I didn't have some of the advanced technologies that I had with this particular build. And in that battle where I was trying to control two ships, I screwed up and one of my ships ended up wandering too close to the enemy. And that one just got focus fired by everything. And when it got focus fired, I couldn't even get around with the other ship to go help fast enough, you know, before that ship got absolutely devastated. Because again, I got too close and just, it was just missed, you know, I guess command, if you want to use that word. Like I just did a horrible job being a commander got one of my ships sunk and then I lost that battle because the one remaining ship just did not have the capacity to fight in the same way that this one super battleship that I built could do. Again, it will be really interesting to see what other alternative builds you can have for ships like this. And again, I'm looking forward to the campaign because campaign is when I think other aspects of things, for example, range or whatever, is going to start to affect things, right? And who knows, maybe there's going to be like budgets for maintenance and things like that because again, I'm not certain that you're going to constantly be running this type of ship as well. There's also um, older, like if you tried some of the other training scenarios, there are older ships as well that you can build, so dreadnoughts and whatever, and they have completely different um, hull shapes, they have completely different sort of armaments they can access, Technologies they can access are completely different. Like some of them you can get nothing better than a triple expansion steam engine and that's like all you've got. And that's tough to play. Ah, yes. So, I'm targeting destroyers because I don't really like destroyers too much. Um, I don't like them getting too close, so I'm trying to keep them at bay. They're reasonably close, they're like 11 kilometers away and my main guns have loaded up the high explosive shells. You can tell the difference between the high explosive and armor piercing because the high explosive is like the orange shells and the armor piercing comes out as like the sort of the white colored shells. So I'm waiting to get a salvo off here and you'll see how much damage a battleship like this can do to a destroyer. Oh yeah, there is this one weird thing that's going on right now and I think this is just maybe a bug, is that sometimes you target a new ship and your ship will just fire one turret worth of shells and then it'll go through a full reload cycle for all the other guns as well, which is a little bit confusing. I mean, I expect that, you know, if all the guns loaded, then 
you know, you would fire one for whatever purposes ranging, and then you'd have the remaining guns all fire once that range has been gained. But you can see over the last two or three salvos, it's not really a salvo, I clicked on the destroyer, a different destroyer, and it constantly only fired like one turret worth of shells, and then it went through a full reload cycle. So that's something I think will probably be fixed. I mean, again, this game is an alpha. So far, it's really, really good. It reminds me partially of, maybe maybe not completely, but it does kind of remind me of Rule the Waves, if anybody kind of remembers that sort of text-based naval game, except this one's got the graphical element, you know, something that is very much needed, I guess, in a lot of more modern games is that, you know, we need this visual stimulation, shall we say, and it's not just all text, even though Rule the Waves is a pretty good game as well, make no mistake, I like that one. By the way, the salvo against the destroyer is pretty lethal. I hit that one destroyer and it's basically crippled. Um, hopefully once I get the next salvo off, I'll end that destroyer. Okay, so here we go. Salvo out and the destroyer is maneuvering, but I don't think... They yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, definitely not saving you considering the uh, shells that I'm throwing out there. And I still have plenty more of them to do. So... Continuing on into my game, I'm currently still playing at 3x speed. Realistically, I mean, yeah, I guess, you know, if you've built your ship correctly and you're absolutely confident in handling whatever is being thrown at you, you can definitely play it at 5x speed. Um, there's also the ability to just let the AI fight the battle for you. There's an AI mode, although I'm not really sure how the AI fights. I haven't really used it, um, especially in a battle like this where it's just like one versus a horde of like enemy ships. I didn't really want to trust the AI to do my battles for me. You can see my secondaries are going off, but they're more, they're more just sort of covering an area in shells. They're not really going to do much of the damage. The main guns are really what matters, and this is the major reason why I decided to go with 15 guns on this battleship. Hey, who knows, right? It's entirely possible that the whole design that I was talking about earlier, where you just make like a super long ship and then throw on as many large guns as you humanly can, and that could be viable. I mean, what's to stop you from saying, hey, I'm just going to make a super close range brawling battleship that's only good at like five kilometers you know high speed so you can close the range but i've got i don't know let's say 21 heavy guns would that work i don't know could be an idea to try so far 15 guns 15 yamato sized guns basically works i know i know i know technicalities yamato had 460s and they're 18.1 inch guns but we don't have that okay <laughs> close enough <laughs> All right, this poor King George, uh, not the real King George V, but it is another, I guess, fictionalized version of the ship, but you can just see how much damage I'm doing to him on every salvo when the return hasn't really done too much to me. Like, I've got some structural damage, but I'm very, very healthy right now. One of the things that I did also learn when I was playing this is that when you are using these super heavy ships, you know, you kind of do want to maintain your distance when you're fighting a horde. Not a good idea to try to close in, even though it's tempting sometimes. You think, you know, I'll just rush in there and I'll do what I need to do, but yeah, not, not a good idea. I'm absolutely just destroying this King George V uh, over there. I know, it's not the KG-5, not the real one. I know, I know, I know. But you can see, right? Every salvo I put out is just devastatingly uh, effective against these ships. But I'm not closing the range. If I was to close the range, let's say I was actually to charge in, see those one, two, three, four destroyers over there? Yeah, those, those destroyers will definitely give me problems for sure because they would start rushing and they would try to get torpedoes and it is, it is hard to deal with them when you're in a big, fat, slow ship. Well, she's not slow, but she is pretty big. Um, it is hard because the ships here don't maneuver very quickly. You'll notice that every time I do execute a, like a turn command, the ship just doesn't turn quickly. She takes her sweet time getting turned around. And yep, I killed that battleship. And by the way, you'll notice the durability of these ships as well. Um, another battleship that is also reasonably well protected is going to take some serious punishment. I mean, I landed multiple, multiple, multiple large caliber shells, and it still took a very long time before I was fully able to sink one ship. These layer armored ships, on the other hand, like the cruisers, 
not nearly as scary. The cruisers, if I can get a good salvo on them, it is pretty much game. So I'm going to see if I can get a salvo here. Here we go. Watch the salvo here. There we go. And watch this cruiser. Bang, bang, and just there it is. Extensive fires just immediately on one salvo dead. If I had fewer guns, maybe not so effective, right? Again, I tried to design with only like nine guns. Hmm, just didn't have enough firepower sometimes. 15 is overwhelming. <laughs> um, overall, a game like this, I think, especially as they continue development and they release more and more, like, I guess, parts of the game, you know, full campaigns or whatever, a game like this is going to have a ton of replayability because you can literally play the game and then go, wait a minute, I could have redesigned this thing differently. Maybe the battle would have turned out differently. And if, especially if you're dealing with, let's say, full-size fleets, then you're constantly designing new ships, new ship types, and whatnot. Obviously, right now, we're dealing with singular missions, so there's only so much you can do per mission. But later on, you can definitely see where things are going to become very, very, um, let's say, interesting. There is also one mission earlier in this game, for example, where your job was to design a, a cruiser. And the cruiser's entire job is to be faster than the destroyer that you're supposed to pursue. And so you need to design a ship that was fast. So hypothetically speaking, let's say you were in a future campaign, maybe, you can't just design things for maximum firepower. Sometimes you really have to consider the fact that, hey, maybe there's something you've got to catch and you have to be fast enough to actually catch it. And if your ship is too slow, then you lose. So I think a game like this has a lot of future potential that obviously, again, not here yet, but it is something that I'm excited to keep an eye out for. Because if we get all the goodies in the future, then wow, we're talking about a game that has nearly infinite replayability. Plus, if they implement nations correctly, I mean, obviously right now, all the nations are randomized, you just kind of get the default hull, and then a flag, and you know, hey, you're Italian. But what if in the future you have kind of maybe like rule the waves kind of things, you know, where like certain technological developments happen in certain times or orders or whatnot. And then you have a whole new slew of challenges, right? Imagine if as your country, you just don't get that technology. How do you build the best possible thing when you don't have certain X technologies? All things that hopefully will come in the future, but now that I've had a chance to really play through this game, at least the first chunk of it, and had a chance to play with the designer and the in-game battles, and tried both single and multi-ship battles, I'm excited. You know, this is a game that I could see myself very easily spending way too many hours on, is the best way to put it. Um, I think just the design element alone I can sink hours and hours and hours and hours into. Even for just this one mission, I think I've designed five different kinds of ships already, and I have more new ideas as I've now been recording this video and thinking about it. I have new ideas that I want to go back and test a little bit later today and hopefully, you know, try that ridiculous idea of just many, many smaller guns, for example, you know, and see how that goes. Maybe it's a horrible idea. Maybe I can just try just something that is invulnerable armor-wise. Who knows? It could be a thing. It's, uh, you know, random ideas to try, shall we say. Anyways, you can see that this battleship that I'm shooting at, I've been pummeling that battleship, and I'm landing a lot of hits on that ship. And it is still not actually sunk, you know? You can sort of tell just how much effort is required to sink some ships. Of course, if your ship hits lucky spots, you can definitely just instantaneously blow up a ship. It actually happened in one of the games, uh, one of the missions where I just went in and I just happened to hit something and the whole ship just went Pow! <laughs> It was like, wow, that battle ended remarkably quickly. I think it lasted all of like 40 seconds because my first shell just went in there. Um, <laughs> but normally, if I'm fighting a battleship, even one that is significantly weaker than what I've got, you can see the amount of effort it takes to actually sink it. Which, again, I think that has a certain degree of realism to it, because real ships didn't just sink after one shell hit. Um, they usually took quite a bit of punishment before they sunk, okay? I know hood and everything, that, that, I know, I know. That's an exception, that was just like an unbelievably lucky hit, but in a large majority of cases, ships took a good 
while to actually send to the bottom of the ocean. Anyways, I'm just gonna speed up the last little chunk because you've kind of seen how the gameplay is. Um, again, you know, the single ship battle is maybe not as super exciting because, you know, everything is relatively simplistic, but, you know, with multiple ships and everything, this game can become a lot more hectic. All in all, um, yeah, very, very happy to see a game like this. Uh, it is quite different than really anything else that I've played so far. I, I know Rule the Waves is in some way similar, but that has no graphics really. I mean, it's very simple. A game like this with its full-blown engine and trying to model things and everything, this is a really nice change, shall we say, and I'm excited to see a game like this. And as you can see, yeah, well, against cruisers and everything, this ship is just absolutely able to devastate everything. So yeah, super freaking battleship all the way. <laughs> Why have multiple battleships when you can have just one of these? <laughs> um, one thing I didn't actually see so far is actually carriers. I uh, wonder how that might change, you know, because against carriers, I would be in a lot of trouble because I just don't have any real effective anti-air here. And so, you know, we'll have to see how they decide to move, you know, in that direction. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it'll just be surface ships all the way and you can go all the way to as crazy as you want. <laughs> you know, maybe the Tillmans, for example. Maybe that's the way you want to go, but all in all, yeah, just it, it's, it's hella exciting. And the graphics are actually you know, pretty nice to look at. There's, ooh, and I sped that back up to like five times speed and just sort of ending things really, really quick. Anyways, if you want to get access to the game right now, uh, there is a link in the video description below to their website. You can totally go check it out if you want to hop in this project, you know, in this relatively early phase, um, you know, absolutely say go ahead because, you know, I do see quite a lot of potential for uh, this game in terms of replayability and all that in the future. Although, of course, right now you're limited to the initial 21 uh, Academy missions, shall we call it. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Um, you know, if you've got any comments or questions or whatnot, you can ask me in the video comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Aside from all that, take care, folks, have yourselves a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again really, really soon.